Hey Robert, here's some hints about problem number two on test number one. Now, we're going to do the pivot table in just a second, but down a couple rows it says accommodate the fact that new transactions might be added to the table later. That means that instead of leaving it just as a table, we want to convert it to an actual Excel table. That means when we add records later to the bottom of an Excel table, whatever solution that is pointing to the table can update. All right, I'm going to click in a single cell, go up to Insert Table, or I can simply use the keyboard Control-T. Now it's going to ask me whether I have headers. And one thing about Excel is it doesn't treat the labels at the top of in the first row of a table with the same nouns in every user interface. Here they call them headers. In a second, when we use the pivot table, it's going to call them fields. Headers, column headers, or the proper name from databasing is fields. I'm going to click OK. Now, if we add data later, if any solution is pointing, everything will update. Now we want to create a pivot table. It says from the table below, create a monthly report that counts the number of transactional sales each sales rep made. That means there's two conditions. So in the row area of the pivot table, we're definitely going to need month. We'll get that from the date column, because the pivot table can automatically group all these into month. And then we'll drag sales rep down to the row area. And for each month, we'll see all the sales rep and the count. I'm going to click in a single cell, Insert, Pivot Table Dropdown from Table Range. Or we can simply use the keyboard, Alt-NVT. Now, right there, I violated the most important rule about tables. So I'm going to click Escape. With a single cell selected, let's go up to Table Design Properties. That is a terrible name. I want to call it something like. Sales table and Enter. Now let's try it. Click in a single cell, Alt-NVT. Much better. Existing. Location, we'll say F13. Click OK. Now, when we drag date down to rows, it's going to group according to a bunch of different categories. If you were to right click Group, you could see the categories they created days and months. We only want months. So I can check, uh, click Days, click OK. And there are our months. Over here, we can see Month. Now, we want to drag Sales Rep down to above Month. And now we get exactly what we want. There's the Sales Rep and Month. We need to make our calculation here. Now. If you drag sales, which I think your email was referring to, if you drag any number field down to the values area, it'll default to sum. Now, we can convert it to count by right click. Summarize values by, these are all the aggregate calculations, and then count. However, and I'm going to use Control Z, Z. Since we know that numbers default to sum and text fields like sales rep, default to count, we can simply drag sales rep down, and bam, there it is. There's the count. So Chantel for March had three transactions. I want to change these labels, count, and enter. Also, notice over here it says month date. That's sort of polite, because it's saying, hey, I got that from the date column. But I'm just going to type month and enter. Now, it also asks you to visualize the top five amounts for monthly sales for sales rep. I'm going to click in a single cell in the count column, go up to Home, Conditional Formatting, and we want to point to top bottom, top 10. By default, it's 10, but I think it says 5. So we'll change it to 5. That red is OK, but I like to click the drop down and custom format. Now, we can do whatever formatting we want. I'm going to click Fill, uh, Yellow, click OK. Actually, you can do whatever you want, border, font, number. There's lots of options. I'm going to click OK, click OK. And because this is a pivot table, a special smart tag pops up. 
I'm going to hover, click the drop down, and it's asking how we want to select it. If I say count, it's just going to do the totals, because those are the biggest. But I want count values for month. And so bam, just like that, one, two, three, four, five. We have visualized to show the top five values. Now, the second part says visualize the trend in counts by month. Anytime we have trend over a date field, we want to use the visualization line chart. I'm going to click in a single cell, Alt-NVT, existing, maybe right there, click OK. Month, down to row. Sales rep, I have my count. By the way, my settings are so that the field names show. If yours do not, if they appear like that, that is a terrible label. That doesn't provide good information for the person looking at the, full, the report. So design, layout, report, layout, and always show in tabular. Now I'm going to click in a single cell, insert, over to charts. There's line. There's line. Now we have some chart junk here. The field buttons, those can allow you to filter, but if you can do your filtering, do it up here. So right click. Hide all field buttons. The legend is only helpful as useful information when you have more than one series of numbers, and we don't, so delete it. The title at the top, I'm going to click. And in the video, I showed you how to link it to the cell, but I'm just going to type it. Now, notice when I'm typing, it doesn't appear here. It shoots you up to the formula bar, but when I hit Enter, there is the chart title. Now, that's not particularly totally helpful, because I'm not quite sure what this uh, series of numbers here means. So I'm going to come over and add axis titles. Now, it highlights it. I'm going to type transactions and Enter. This one is self-evident from the monthly up here, so I'm going to click and delete. You can also come over and uncheck. Well, that's hard. I want to, don't want to do that. You can uncheck one or the other. I'm just going to select it and use the keyboard shortcut, delete. And there you go. I hope that helps for problem number two on test number one.